Hello and welcome to Biblical Principles of Finances and we're here today with Natalie Tilson. Natalie is kind enough to come in and share some of her thoughts and God's Word about what the Bible says about finances. And these are some incredible studies, so be sure and check those out either on our Facebook page or on YouTube. You can subscribe to those so that when we post those, you can uh, be aware of that. Natalie, welcome. Glad to see you today. Thank you, Scott. It's great to see you as well. Good, good, good. So um, I'm always interested to see what, what kind of topic you have for us today. What are we going to be talking about? Well, Scott, today I wanted to get into um, life insurance a little more. Okay. I know that we briefly mentioned that in our last video where we talked about wheels. Right. Um, we kind of touched on it just a little bit, but I really want to get into a little more detail um, about some of the little nuances with life insurance. That sounds great. So, Scott, I guess basically, first off, we need to um, address for everybody, what exactly is life insurance? Um, well, you know, the purpose of life insurance is really, in, it's intended to provide money to our family or our beneficiary, and that is just simply whoever we designate to receive those funds in the event of our death. Um, and, and that's really all life insurance is intended to be. So, you know, I know some people sort of spend it as a savings account or getting more money for less money. That's not really the purpose of that, right? Um, well, I think we're going to hopefully see when we finish this okay. that, that really there's kind of a season in our life, okay. mostly for life insurance. Okay. So we're going to sort of unpack that a little bit today. That sounds great. So, Scott, really there are two types of life insurance. First of all, we have what is referred to as term insurance, and that's just simply where you purchase a policy for a specific term, such as like a five-year or a 10-year term or something like that. Okay. Now, if you do um, die during that period of time, uh, the money from your policy will be paid to your beneficiaries. And the other type is called permanent insurance, and that can last your entire lifetime and is usually more costly. Okay. So pretty much what most people will have is like a term life insurance policy. Okay. And for this, like I said, that's for a specific term that's going to be specified in the policy that you purchase. And with any of these um, policies, it's so important that you remember to pay those premiums. Mm. And a premium, uh, just for anyone who's wondering maybe what that is, it's just like a, a regular bill that you pay in order to have that policy and to keep that thing active. I have heard uh, cases, uh, even had a friend that was going through some dementia and uh, mm -hmm. his responsibility was paying the bills and he actually forgot to pay his life insurance and the spouse didn't know and then when he passed away thinking that they were going to be covered and have life insurance and and it wasn't just for that one reason exactly yeah. and once you f do not make that premium automatically then that that uh, life insurance policy goes away right so it's so important yes. to make sure that you keep up with That's those, with those yes. premiums and and pay timely to keep them active now, Scott, with life insurance, it's not really a one-size-fits-all type thing for everybody. And what I mean by that is that coverage that you have, the amount of coverage, and even if you have life insurance at all, is really going to be an individual situation. And um, it's really going to depend on where you are financially and at what point you are in life, okay. really, whether you whether it makes sense to have life insurance or not. Right. So I'm really hoping that maybe we can address some of this for some people um, to decide to make that decision. Do I need coverage? Do I not need coverage? How much coverage do I actually need? And some questions like that. These are really good topics, Natalie, because uh, uh, when I was very young, even a student in high school, uh, I was... Uh, influenced by a guy that said I needed insurance, uh, life insurance, and so if I would have took that money and invested that, uh, <laughs> or even put it in the bank, uh, I would have had a lot more, but you know, at 18 years old, that's probably not an age that you really need life insurance. Well, actually, Scott, for people who are young, and, and like I said, it depends mm -hmm. on your, your individual situation, right. But um, sometimes in the case of like a young adult, it depends on, you know, were you married at that time? Things like that. Were right. you going to be married soon? Mm -hmm. um, 
sometimes we have a case where once you begin working, it's kind of like an insurance policy to cover your salary is okay. what you really need to think of that life insurance as, as being okay. for you. So I may not have made a huge So mistake. you may not have made a, a bad decision. <laughs> Even though I've made it to this point at 62 <laughs> years old, so yes. That's and good. of course okay. it is somewhat of a, um, I guess maybe a gamble or mm -hmm. a risk as with any investment. Right. You know, you're, we don't know when, how long our life is going to be. Um, so, you know, in looking back, you can say, well, I could have invested that sure, money. But who, but then, who knows? Who knows? Right. Yeah, that's right. So really for, a, like say, inst for instance, a young family just starting out, where maybe just one person is the sole source of income. Um, in a case like that, yes, I would definitely recommend having a life insurance policy because especially if there's uh, children involved there right. and, and just due to whatever reasons, maybe uh, that couple decides that one of the parents is gonna stay at home because um, daycare might be too expensive sure. or yes. maybe have, school-aged children and they decide that one wants to stay at home and homeschool or right. something along those lines mm -hmm. well what you don't want to happen is for the one who's out as the breadwinner yes. bringing the money in something happened to that uh, person and then that throw the family into yes. total chaos where the other you have to change the whole lifestyle of what you're doing exactly yes. has yes. to go look for a job mm -hmm. and just you know you can imagine what that would do yeah. as you're to the children with, dealing with the death anyway yes. exactly mm -hmm. so for a young family I would definitely recommend mm -hmm. that that there's some life insurance there and you know um, even in uh, First Timothy. First Timothy, I was reminded of this. First Timothy 5 through 8, it says, But if anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for members of his household, he is denied the faith and is worse than an unbelier. That's a pretty big statement. That <laughs> is. So we want to make sure that in the mm -hmm. event of our death that we are providing for our family right. even after we are gone. Okay. So for in a case like that, definitely I would say that, that it's a good idea to have that life insurance. Also, Scott, as long as you have debts, you should have life insurance to help settle your estate in the event of your death. Because those dates are still, uh, those debts those are debts still, are still due, right? owed. Yes. yes, sir. And you know, as Christians, I want to um, just take some time to explain this because I know a lot of people sort of have an idea of, well, I'll just structure my assets and I'll just run up the debt and once I'm gone, I'm gone and, you know, I really don't care what they do or whatever. That's really not how we should be acting as Christians. Right. Because, you know, as Christians, even after we are gone, it's our legacy and what we leave with our, our name, you know, our integrity. We should always walk in integrity and if we owe that money then we owe that money That's right. even in the event of our death and we don't want to leave all that mess um, for our family and and just uh, what they would have to go through right. you know right. mentally and emotionally mm -hmm. so we have a moral obligation to settle those debts and um, Scott also I want to point out and this is something that people probably may not understand but the more we get ourselves in debt by having that mind frame as a Christian, the more we should be covered with life insurance mm. so that if we do pass, those debts can be settled. Yes. So that's something we really need to think about before we go up and run up this great big, you know, we talked about the mountain of debt, yes. mm -hmm. um, you know, before we have all these debts, because the more we go in debt, the more we need to have coverage and the more we're going to be paying those premiums right. to make sure we have that coverage. So, so it's kind of a double sort of whammy. A, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Debt is a no-win situation, it right? Is. It is. makes it hard. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So if you have debts, if you have a mortgage or things like that, yes, you do need to have that life insurance. And then third, the third reason, so we have, you know, in the event of our death um, for young families to cover our income, um, and if we have debts, and then third, I would say, is to cover any burial or funeral expenses. I think this is an area that a lot of times people think, oh, well, you know, I, people don't want to think about death, and and so they don't plan for that. Mm -hmm. So they just go on about their ways and and 
then all of a sudden, in the event of their, their death, the family's left trying to scramble, figure out, figuring out how are we going to pay for this funeral and, right. and burial costs. And that Very can be several usually, thousands, yeah. yes. yes. So we want to make sure that we're covered from that aspect as well. Now, Scott, you know, um, do we always need to have life insurance? Well, like I said, with this, it's not a one-size-fits-all type thing. And if we're if people are working, like we've discussed before, um, you know, when we did it, our uh, Where's Your Horse class and we looked at the different budgets, um, kind of when you're under that Bronco budget and you're getting rid of all that debt, right. yes, you do kind of need to have that life insurance because, like, once again, you have debt. Mm -hmm. But then when you have those debts paid off and you're over on the other side of that mountain, you know, and you're on that Happy Trails budget yep. when, when things are really getting better for you. You've got your savings. You've got that savings. That stuff, exactly. Yeah. So at that point, um, some reasons against having life insurance that you could look to see if this is possibly a, a savings for you where you could maybe take that money from the premiums and put it in, you know, we discussed sinking funds, maybe right. um, invest it in some some better way as a better financial steward. So reasons against having life insurance would be, of course, um, just the opposite of what we've talked about. Maybe now your children are grown and they're able to provide for their own financial needs so you don't have to worry about covering them in the event of your death. Um, your debts are paid off and funeral and burial expenses are not going to break the bank for you. Right. So in other words, you know, perhaps at that point you've got that emergency fund that's built up, or this may even be a good time to explore going ahead and doing that prepay mm -hmm. with funeral expenses um, if, if that's something that you want to, you know, consider doing. Um, but you just want to make sure that there is money there, that it's not going to be a total financial catastrophe in the event of your death for the rest of your family. And then finally, the fourth reason um, that I think that it would be okay to forego the life insurance is if your spouse has a means of financial security um, in the event of your death, such as a 401k or some kind of retirement plan um, where he, you have designated them as the beneficiary. So at this point, it's like your 401k or 403b or whatever retirement plan that you have in place sort of becomes like the life insurance policy that your spouse is able to cash in on and have that money to continue with their living expenses yes. once you are, are no longer, um, when, when you are deceased. So I just want to caution people about a few things and a few pitfalls that are out there with life insurance. Um, first of all, I know a lot of times people have a tendency to look at uh, life insurance for small children. Mm -hmm. And this is a tactic that's out there with people who sell life insurance. Um, and let's face it, we love our children very much. Right. Uh, they're very important. They're very special. They don't bring much to the table in terms of revenue. <laughs> <laughs> or work or uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so but they are costly though yes. so we just want to keep that in mind I mean I understand that there are times when maybe maybe if your baby is the new Gerber baby or something yeah. and, and you know they're bringing money in for you then right. you definitely you want to make sure that that income source is secured right. But um, a lot of times insurance agents will sort of play on that with, with new parents of, oh, you have this precious baby, don't you want to make, you know, life insurance, well, let me sell you this life insurance yes. policy or something. Keep those pitfalls in mind and, and these things that um, we just need to be mindful of. Right. So it's kind of a buyer beware type thing. Mm -hmm. And also, um, don't always fall for that life insurance that becomes the college plan uh, that's kind of a scheme, and, yes. you know, you may want to look at, we've talked about a 529 plan um, for saving for the future education Which for your children. Exactly. Because yes. that's what it's for. It exactly. Yeah. So there's other th other yeah. um, things out there that really are better financial instruments yeah. for funding your children's future education. And then finally, if you make the decision that it is best at this time in your life for you to have that life insurance, then know that there are a couple of agents, types of agents that are out there that can sell you these policies. 
One is a captive agent. Okay. And what that is is someone who works specifically for an insurance company. They want to sell you the policy on behalf of their company. They're sort of captive to that company. Right. And the other is a broker agent. Mm -hmm. And a broker agent can sell you policies that are offered by more than one different type of insurance company. And you could potentially save some money there by doing um, some shopping around and seeing what works best for you. That's good because that goes back to you saying that one size doesn't fit all. Exactly. So you could potentially save some money and I would encourage everybody um, you know, last time we did, in talking about wheels and things, we discussed about the importance of going through and doing some of that spring cleaning and looking at these things that we don't always uh, think about. That's right. And I think maybe about once a year is a good time to take a look at those policies and decide, is this the right coverage that I need at this point in my life? Yes, because we forget about what we've even... You know, right, what, what we even have. Yes, exactly, <laughs> yes. Okay. So I would encourage people to do that, and you could potentially find that, that there's some savings there for you, or you can strive to ultimately reach the point with paying off your debts mm -hmm. and building up that 401k so at some point in your life you no longer have this as an expense right. in your life. Right. That is great. And, you know, going back to First Timothy there, we – uh, we know that the Bible teaches that our faith and trust should be in God. And our days are numbered here. We don't know when that is going to be. God wants us to be good financial stewards of what he has entreated to us. And if we follow his biblical principles, uh, it just makes more sense than having to uh, get in, caught in this debt snowball and all this other stuff that we're uh, trying to help people, to help them to see. And just it's an education thing because a lot of people don't know. And uh, so thank you so much for taking this time and uh, helping us out. And, you know, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we know that nobody gets out of off this earth alive. And, uh, and the most important thing, uh, one of them is taking care of your family, but the other one is taking care of your very soul. So if you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I pray that you would uh, turn from your sins and realize that Jesus is God's Son and He came to this earth to die and give of his blood as a an atonement a buying back he uses a lot of financial terms that god does, does in his word a buying back of our souls because he loves us so much and he loves you and i pray that if you haven't done that that today would be that day you take care and natalie thank you so much thank you scott all right god bless